What is up, YouTube? Nintendo 64 Fun Time coming back at you. I have a really fun episode for you guys today. It's an episode that I've been thinking about and kind of working on for quite a long time. Um, I think as gamers, one of the best things that we can do on our YouTube channels is to share some top 10 lists. What it does is I think it kind of gives us an idea of the personality of that YouTuber or that gamer and just like what games do they like you know it gives them a personality and I've been wanting to do one of these for a long time but I have a problem with top 10 lists one of the reasons being I feel like if you were to go like top 10 favorite games I feel that's like an ever evolving thing or maybe how you're feeling on that day so it it tends to change for me. I don't have these like core top 10 games. You know, I'll play something and I'll remember other games and stuff like that. So I think one of the things that I can do as a top 10 list is come back to the top 10 most replayable games. Games that I continually come back to, continually play, and continually love every playthrough I have of them. Now, most replayable doesn't necessarily mean my favorite. Some of these games that I am going to talk about are some of my favorite games. They would be in my top 10 favorite games, but you know, they necessarily, you know, some of them necessarily may not be. Um, and it's hard because I am leaving out some of my favorite games of all time. One good example of what I'm talking about is uh, Shadow of the Colossus. Now, Shadow of the Colossus is one of my favorite games of all time. I would put it in my top 10, maybe lower on my top 10, but it would be in my top 10. But I almost refuse to replay that game. The reason being because the reason when I played it, it's just such this like epic journey and you, you have this such like overwhelming feeling of just alone and accomplishing these journeys and like the Colossus are these just big puzzles and it's just this huge emotional experience and then it's over and to know that you can never really feel that way about the game again because you've you've done it before um, to me is just I don't want to replay that game. So those are the kind of games that I'm talking about that are some of my favorite games, but may not necessarily be replayable. So here we go. My first top 10 list. Here are my top 10 most replayable games. Here we go. Nintendo 64 Fun Time. Number 10, SimCity 3000. Now, I didn't really have like a crazy PC back in the day. Most of the SimCity games did come out on PC. There were some consoleized versions, um, but the PC games were always the best. I did play SimCity 2000 and it was such a good game, but when SimCity 3000 came out, they added so much to it. The game was so much bigger and the music was insane. The soundtrack fit exactly what you were doing. It was almost like a jazz elevator music sort of thing, but it just fit. And then there was the ambiance of like the city noises. It was just such a good game. And every now and again, probably once a year, I'll plug it into my computer, I'll replay it, I'll try a few times to build a city. Most of the time they fail, but every now and again you can do it right. And it's just I don't know what it is about the game that just makes me keep coming back to it, but I absolutely love it. There's such a charm to it. Um, and it's unfortunate because the SimCity th series after 3000 really went downhill with SimCity 4 after EA acquired it. It just wasn't the same. And then when they rebooted the series and EA had all those server problems, I refused to buy another EA game after the, the premature Command and Conquer server shutting down and then the new reboot of SimCity, EA is just not my thing. So I don't know if SimCity will ever be back to how awesome it was, but number 10, SimCity 3000. Moving on to number nine. I feel like you guys might feel this is a little low in the list, but for me it kind of sits fairly comfortable. Uh, Mario Kart 64, one of it would maybe be in my top 10 sort of list thing, but I come back and replay this game a lot when I'm with friends. I think that's when it's the most fun. I don't really go back and play it by myself, 
but I will if we have friends in the room and I want to plug in my Nintendo 64. The reason why it's so fun is because anybody can pick up the sticks and just go to town and have a really good time. And if you are a little bit better at the game, Mario Kart 64 hands down had the best battle mode, period. Playing the battle mode, the balloon fight with your friends was just so much fun and it's so easy to go back to because it was simple and it was just fun. So Mario Kart 64, I still love that game. Great party game. Moving on to number 8. KOTOR, Knights of the Old Republic. This was my first experience with Bioware, a Bioware style RPG. Now if you know Bioware, if you've played Bioware games, they have a style that's just unlike any other style of game. Um, I love the RPG kind of story mode, I love the choices they put in it, and they take all of that Bioware goodness and put it into the Star Wars realm. The story was amazing. There's replayability because you can go back and you can be light or you can be dark. All your choices end up changing how the story goes. Your interactions with players, you can kill players, you cannot find players. Everything changes the story, just like any other Bioware game. But KOTOR, hands down, is my favorite Bioware game. I don't play it every year, but I do come back and play it every now and again because it is fun. I do have that nostalgia for it, and I really, really, really enjoy it. Um, I'm pretty darn good at it, unfortunately, so every time I play through it, it gets really, really easy. But I still love it. I still love the story. You know, if you want to be evil one day, you can. If you want to be good the next day, you can. So, KOTOR, I absolutely love it. Moving on to number seven. One of the launch titles for the Xbox, Halo 1. Halo 1 will always be my favorite Halo because of the campaign. The multiplayer was amazing for its time, and land partying and having parties with Halo 1 was just insane. But Halo 2 kind of came and trumped that with the online capabilities. But as far as the campaign goes, no other Halo campaign was as good as Halo 1. I've played most of them um, really hardcore up to about Halo 3. But Halo 1 is the only campaign that keeps me coming back to it. I think about it every now and again, and every time I think of Halo, I think of the first Halo's campaign and how I want to go back and play that. The multiplayer aspect for me has died, but that first campaign, just how it goes, the story of the Flood is just so good, and I love it, and I feel like... The difficulty settings ramping up to Legendary is very appropriate and I just, I absolutely love it and I just crushed that campaign back in the day. Probably one of my favorite first person shooter campaigns, period. Halo 1. Moving on to number 6, Castlevania Aria of Sorrow. The Game Boy Advance for me I think is my favorite system of all time. The reason why is because it's a portable system, which I love portable systems. I grew up owning only portable systems. But the big thing is, not only do you get to play Game Boy games, not only do you get to play Game Boy Color games, but now you have all of these Game Boy Advance games, which up until the Nintendo DS had the most releases on any platform. So many good games for the Game Boy Advance, and I don't feel it still gets enough credit today. But Castlevania Aria of Sorrow, to me, took everything that Symphony of the Night did and made it ten times better. I know some people won't agree with me. I know some people think um, uh, the Castlevania for PlayStation, what did I just say, Symphony of the Night is the better game, but to me, Aria of, this, Aria of Sorrow is so much better. The RPG elements on top of the Castlevania games, you know, diving into the castle and finding the secret stuff and the boss fights and everything was just so good. And to play all of that on a portable platform was absolutely amazing. 
in some areas of the game, the music was phenomenal. Other areas of the game where the music changes in different areas was not as good. So if there was anything that I could nitpick about Castlevania Area of Sorrow, it would be the, the music, the audio. But to me, with it being portable, I can take it to work, and I replay that game easily once a year. I can, I absolutely love it. I can blow through it probably in about you know eight hours or so, um, finding out all the all the you know absorption abilities and stuff. You can get through it really quick. So yeah, I love that game. Moving on to another portable game, number five. I got Pokemon Red and Blue. Now to me. There's only 151 Pokemon. I played some of the games afterwards, but nothing like kind of fueled my passion for Pokemon more than the original Red and Blue games. Those are the ones that I grew up with. Those were around when I was when the Pokemon Mania kind of just started. Um, so I have such connections to those games. And I still have my cartridges, and I'll play them, you know, if we go on a trip or something like that, I'll restart a game. Probably once every other year I'll play through, uh, you know, Pokemon Blue. Um, and I just, I always have fun with it. I always try to use different Pokemon as like your main five um, that I did the last time, and it kind of changes the game experience a little bit. But again, when I think Pokemon, I immediately go to Pokemon Red and Blue. I don't think about any other Pokemon. Um, and I, I, I have so much love for the original 151 Pokemon. So. I don't know, a lot of people may th have their f favorite Pokemon, and I know a lot of people may disagree with me, but those to me are the best Pokemon games. Um, moving on to number four, now we're getting pretty serious, we're getting into the games that really are up there on my top ten favorite games of all time, but not only are they my favorite, they're games that I continually come back and play, try to play once a year or so. So number four, Legend of Zelda Re Ugh. Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, or Ocarina, however you want to say it. This game has such a special place in my heart. It just having the experience of playing this game, you can't really describe it now. I can't describe it now unless you were somebody in the mid-90s and got Ocarina of Time, plugged it into your Nintendo 64 and just had the, this magical experience before you heard anybody talking about it, before there were HD remakes, there was just something so special about it, just the adventure and the characters and the personality they had and the things you could do in the game, it was just, it was to me, it was so magical that that game made me fall in love with console gaming more than portable gaming because I just realized at that moment that it could do so much more than what a portable game could do. It was filled with emotion and just adventure and I just I fell in love with Link and just the lore of Hyrule. Um, and I think today that it is still my favorite Zelda game. Breath of the Wild was an amazing game, and it was an amazing experience, but to me, I have so much nostalgia for Ocarina of Time that it keeps me coming back and playing it. It keeps me thinking about it, even when I'm not playing it. When I think of Hyrule, I think of the Ocarina of Time Hyrule and how it was laid out and how much I loved it. So, I don't know, that may not be your favorite Zelda. I know A Link to the Past may probably be your favorite Zelda, but to me it's always going to be Ocarina of Time, only because of my experiences with it. Moving on to number three. This may be kind of a stupid one for you guys, and you may completely disagree with this one, having it so high up on my list, but Donkey Kong 94 for Game Boy. Now, I said my first games my first systems were portable gaming systems and Donkey Kong 94 was just so good I don't know what keeps me coming back to it there's a little bit of a puzzle aspect to it and if there's a game that I'm really really good at it is Donkey Kong 94 I'm so good at that game because I've played it so much I can blow through all the levels and it's still fun and I, I just I can't explain it 
I don't know why it's so high up there on my most replayable list, but anytime I pick up my Game Boy and I'm thinking, hmm, what game should I replay for my Game Boy, or what game do I want to now play for my Game Boy, I almost always pick up Donkey Kong 94. If I take my Game Boy on a trip, I always take Donkey Kong 94. Um, you know, I may pop in other games, but to me, I just, I always keep popping that game back into my Game Boy. Even if I play a few levels and get through a few, I always just come back and replay it. I absolutely love it. I feel like it's a little bit of a hidden gem, so if you haven't played Donkey Kong for Game Boy, please go back and replay it. It is so good. So, I don't know. But anyway, moving on to number two. Final Fantasy 4, or in the States here, Final Fantasy 2. I know a lot of people, as far as the Super Nintendo goes, if they would pick a game for the Super Nintendo that's RPG style, you might pick Chrono Trigger, you might pick Final Fantasy 3 or 6, whatever it was, you know, you know a, a not in the States. But to me, Final Fantasy 4 slash Final Fantasy 2 is my favorite Final Fantasy game, hands down. You guys might not like that decision, but for me, playing that game in the early 90s and the epicness of the game, like, I can't describe it to you going back in the day and never have played a game like this period. There just wasn't a game out there, period, with this epic storyline of good and evil and darkness and people dying in your party and secret quests to get other summons and just, just the epicness of the game and how huge it seemed and how beautiful to me the story was. You know, this emotional journey all in the early 90s was just absolutely insane. I had never experienced a game like this before, and this game made me fall in love with JRPG style games. I did like the other Final Fantasy games, but to me, this game is in my top 10, and it is a game that I do replay once a year. I will replay this game once a year. I can get through it pretty quick, and I know all the little secret areas and stuff like that, but it's just so much fun every time. There are some areas where you need to grind quite a bit, but grinding in JRPGs to me is just so much fun. I love it. And anytime I think of a Final Fantasy game, I do just immediately think about Final Fantasy 4 slash 2. I love it. I love it. And if you haven't replayed it, there are HD remakes, but they are terrible. The polygonal remakes, as opposed to the sprites, just look terrible. And if you're going to replay this game, if you haven't played this game and you want to go be replay this game, please pick the Super Nintendo one with the sprites. It looks so much better than some of the HD remakes. That's my opinion. No big deal. But Final Fantasy IV slash 2, absolutely love it. So before I move on to number one, my number one choice, I am going to do a few honorable mentions. They didn't quite make the list yet. Some of them are a little um, newer games, and some of them are a little bit older, but a few honorable mentions that I have. Need for Speed Underground 2. I don't know why I like this game, but to me it's the perfect racing game. It's a street racing game. You get to upgrade your car, which is really cool. You get to deck it out, and it's basically this like open world racing game that you just go around and you can do whatever, want, anything you want as far as finding races. There's a bunch of race styles you can do. The drifting was really fun, and I just really liked this game. I have it for PC, I have it for PS2. I'd probably go back and play it once every, you know, three, four years or so. Another honorable, honorable mention for me is the first Fable game. I don't know why I like this game so much. It's just, there's just something about it that I really enjoy. Just like KOTOR, you can kind of pick your choices of kind of the good and evil. Um, it's very simple on its RPG elements, it's more of like an action RPG, but for whatever reason it's so charming to me and I love it and I continue to go back and play Fable uh, The Lost Chapters every now and again. Two honorable mentions that are newer games are uh, Skyrim 
and Super Mario Odyssey. I know Super Mario Odyssey just came out, but it was so much fun. I can't describe it any other way than just fun. I have never smiled that much in a game in a really long time. And I beat it all the way. I got all the moons and the you know the extra moons you can buy up to a hundred or nine hundred and ninety nine. But to me, I haven't replayed it yet. But it is a game that I am going to go back to and play sooner or later. It is a game for me that is going to have more than one, two, three, four times playability. I'm going to keep going back to that game. I really enjoyed it that much. So there are a few quick honorable mentions for me that didn't quite make the top ten yet. Um, because some of them are newer and then the other ones I enjoyed but necessarily weren't in my top 10 because I don't play them as much as I do the other games. On to my number one choice, Secret of Mana for SNES. This is probably my favorite game of all time on top of it being my number one most replayable game. I do replay this game once a year, always. I don't know why, but I love this game so much. There is so much charm. It is so bright and colorful. You know, I love the characters and kind of their little personalities. I love the idea that you can play this with multiple other people. They can be part of this journey with you as well on and off, and they can plug in. And because it's an action RPG, they assist you. I love like the wheel style um, selection screen and level up system. Um, I love the magic ability, even though if you upgrade your magic consistently when you get orbs, you pretty much break the game. So lately when I try to replay it, I try to do weapons only, no magic. But it's just so good. It's I have so much love for this game. The music is good. Everything is good about this game. They are coming out with an HD remake. They're turning it into a polygon graphic game. They're trying to update it. It looks so bad. I I can't I can't I don't want to I I don't even know. I have nothing to say about the HD remake other than turning a game that looks so beautiful, so beautiful, kind of in that top-down 2D sprite sort of thing, and then making it a 3D game, it doesn't look good. I can't, I don't even want to talk about it. The HD remake, I can't even talk about it. But if you go back, if you play Secret of Mana, please go back, play the original Secret of Mana. Um, it's just so good. I have so much love in my heart for this game. Um, and it's just a game that I continually go back and replay. I can't describe it, but when I did play it and playing it with my friends, the multiplayer, I just never had a game that I played quite like that. So I hope this helps you guys understand who I am as a gamer and just the games that I enjoy, the games that I like going back to. So I hope you enjoyed it. I'll try to do more top 10 games if you guys like this sort of thing. So there you go. Those were my top 10 most replayable games of all time. So Nintendo 64 fun time. Always be gaming.